Hi, my name is Doug Hanel. Um, I'm a professor in orthopedics and sports medicine at the University of Washington. I'm affiliated with uh, Seattle Children's Hospital where I do hand and upper extremity surgery at Harborview Medical Center where I do trauma, trauma reconstruction of the upper extremity and microsurgery. Um, today we're going to do an examination of the upper extremity in an otherwise healthy individual. This is Levi He's in the ninth grade here in Seattle. In the examination of the hand, we first look at the appearance and the, and the station of the hand also. In this normal hand, you'll notice that there's a normal cascade. There's a, the hand looks animated. We talk with our hands, some of us more than others. But this hand is animated. It has normal cascade, the extended finger going down into the small finger. It has normal prominence, the hypothenar eminence, the thenar eminence. And as you extend the fingers, which Levi is doing, we'll notice that there are palpable soft spots in between the fingers themselves. And if we take and put it end on, I'm going to have it kind of go like that, Levi. I'm going to push this back here. These soft prominences are not the tendons. That's where the neurovascular bundles are, here and here, here and here. And you can actually feel some of the digital nerves in the, in the hand and in the landmarks. The obvious one is the nerve to the radial side of the index finger, which can be palpated at this crease. And that's that small line there. And you can also palpate the digital nerves that go to the thumb, right at the digital palmar crease of the thumb. Now, in examining the hand itself, we have normal cascade, it's, uh, it is obvious to us that all of the tendons are intact to their motor units. But I'm going to be very, very specific, and I'm going to break up my hand examination into the component parts of observation. We talked about basic landmarks. Then I'm going to palpate the bony landmarks, and the palpable bony landmarks consist of the radial styloid, which is right here, okay, the pisiform, a bony prominence on the ulnar side of the wrist, and here. If I turn the forearm and bring it up here, and I run my finger up on the subcutaneous border of the pronated forearm, of, and I'm running on a subcutaneous border of the ulna, this ends right at the ulnar styloid. If I turn the wrist over or in this region, come across here, and have the patient drop his wrist just like that and hold it right there, don't let me move it, I can palpate the flexor carpi ulnaris, very prominent here, coming across in the flexor carpi radialis. And with the hand in this position, I can also palpate and relax just for a moment. I want you to take the small finger, bring it over to your thumb, and I want you to pinch hard and pinch like that. And in this case, we'll see the bony or we'll see the landmark and palpate the palmaris longus tendon. 20% of patients don't have that. Levi has a palmaris longus shown right there. And that's an easy way to bring it out, pinching between the thumb and the small finger and palpating it. As we go to the dorsum of the hand, we'll see that there is the radial styloid again and the ulnar styloid. And as we run our hand across, there's a bony prominence on the back, and that's called Lister's tubercle. If you take Lister's tubercle, which is this palpable bony prominence, about halfway between the ulnar styloid and the radial styloid, a little bit more towards the radial styloid, and you drop your finger distally, you drop into a space, and that space corresponds to the, the meeting of two carpal bones, the scaphoid and the lunate, and that's where the scaphoid lunate ligament is. Okay? And then you run it a little bit further, and you run in the space between where the lunate meets the capitate in that area. And so why do we do that? Well, looking specifically for pathology in those areas, those will be painful. Okay? We'll run that across. Now, one of the things about children with their open physes and physeal injuries, very frequently we'll have normal examinations, but as we take and we palpate along the, sub the subcutaneous border of the radius heading towards the radial styloid, very often 
as I come to where the physis is, the child will react, will lift up, will show some pain and difference. And that's because there's injury that isn't showing up on radiographs, but there is injury to the physeal plate. 